Hello and welcome to this video. If you saw one of my previous videos that talked about how we can get eBay managed payments into QuickBooks nice and easily, then you'll notice at the end of that video, then you'll notice the end of that video that I basically asked if anyone wanted me to go through in more detail the whole process from start to finish. And lots of you did. So with that in mind, we've decided to go through and give you exactly what you need, which is a breakdown of how eBay managed payments move into QuickBooks using one SaaS. And instead of just going through it in one big video, we're gonna break it down into smaller chunks. So all we wanna do is we wanna take this whole series and break it down. Basically, we're gonna look at one SaaS in totality, but looking at all the different functionalities that it's got. Now, one of the main functionalities and the one that we're looking at most importantly is that eBay to QuickBooks. One SaaS does a whole lot more, and we're gonna go through each of the individual connections and see how they work, how to use them throughout this series. We're gonna look at how eBay and QuickBooks can talk to each other. We're also gonna make sure for episode number one, we keep it nice and straightforward. So in this first video, we're gonna look at businesses who are not VAT registered but need that eBay link and also have no requirement for any stock management within QuickBooks. So this should account for the majority of those smaller starting up businesses who haven't yet got to that VAT threshold. Now the beauty of this connection is it doesn't matter how many transactions you have, it's going to be acceptable. So we're not looking at the amount of transactions on this, we're just looking at basically how complex you need those transactions to be recorded. And for the more complex transactions, you will need to be looking at this in a slightly different way. But for this method, we're gonna look purely at your eBay managed payments and particularly your payouts. Let's have a look. My name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, certified UK trader with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of account over at Boffix. Now, as I said in the intro, this is all about making sure that you've got your eBay to QuickBooks connection done perfectly using one SaaS. As we mentioned in the late last video, the best thing about this actual connection is it's completely free of charge. So this should be perfect for the majority of you out there who has an eBay store and looking to record it on QuickBooks. Now again, this particular video, the first one in the series, is all going to be about making it really straightforward. And all we really care about is recording the payouts. Now the reason we can't just record the payouts and just put it to sales and say job done is because those payouts are more complicated than that. If you think about it, when you receive a payout from eBay, you're not just receiving the amount you sold your item for, but it's gonna be less any different transactions, i.e. fees or costs or anything that goes with it. So we can't just go and put the payout itself when it hits the bank and put it directly to sales, but what we can do is we can let one SaaS say how that split of that payout goes between my sales and my expenses. Telling me what my net position is gonna be and then we basically record against that net position. And that's what we wanna look at today. We wanna to keep it really straightforward, really, really simple. And that's gonna be the key to today's video. We wanna make sure that you can connect one SaaS to your eBay account and make it really straightforward and simple. In future videos, we're gonna be looking at more complex ways of doing it, where we're gonna be looking at how VAT or how you might wanna stop manage, or when there are particular situations where you're gonna to need to bring in not just the payout information, but you're actually gonna to need to worry about every transaction that goes through eBay. And when that comes into play, it's more complicated. But let's keep it simple for now. Let's go and have a look in there and see how we account based on purely payouts from eBay. Let's have a look. Now, one of the big things that can confuse people is that you don't want to double count. So if you don't set up one SaaS correctly, the danger is that you could be accounting for your payouts and also accounting for your income from those particular transactions. So first of all, let's make sure we know exactly what information we want from to come through from eBay to QuickBooks and how OneSAS can help. It's all gonna resolve around this screen here. So under your payment sections, under payouts, you'll get a breakdown of all the different payouts you've had in this particular period. Now, it's these payouts that we care about because at the end of the day, once you've been paid for those transactions, that's a really good place to be putting your income. Now, I can't stress this enough. This isn't for every single business out there. 
if you're below that VAT threshold and you're a sole trader, then you can account for things on what's called cash basis. And what cash basis means is you don't have to worry about accounting for anything until you've physically been paid for it. And in this case, that payout is you physically being paid for that particular transaction. So in this case, it's perfect for these particular types of businesses. Let's make it really straight. Let's keep things simple. Let's keep things straightforward. And let's only account for our transactions when you physically get that payout. Let's have a look how one task can help. Well, if these are the payouts that I see from eBay, then on QuickBooks, what I care about are these transactions here. Here are some of the ones that have just come through recently, and these are the ones I'm interested in. And if I look, £8.98 there, back to eBay, £8.98. £17.74 there, back to eBay, £17.74. So I can see that my payouts are coming through into QuickBooks via the bank account, and these are what I want to put them. Now again, I can't just put these transactions, categorize them and put them against eBay sales, for example, because then I'm not going to be accounting for what's actually happened. So that £8.98, let's look into it a little bit further. That £8.98 that is coming into my bank account actually relates to a £10.75 sale. So that's what I care about showing with a £1.77 fee. So I need to have £10.77 as my sale with that fee there. How do I account for that? Well, if I jump into QuickBooks App Store, so all I do is go to apps.com. From here, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type in the word one SAS. From one SAS, you'll notice I have eBay by one SAS just here. Notice how it says it's completely free of charge, which we like. And then from here, all I need to do is press get app now. I can then connect it nicely. I then connect it to my account and it's going to come through automatically to the eBay to QuickBooks workflow. Now, your first time you do this, you're gonna to have to sign into eBay and possibly have to sign back into QuickBooks as well. When you do that though, this is the importance. You're gonna be shown this workflow here. And you've got the chance to work on an order basis, a payout basis, a product basis, and a stock level basis. Remember, we want to keep this straightforward and simple. We're only interested in this one on a payout basis. So let's have a look what options we get as a payout basis. So from a payout basis, you're going to be asked for a certain information. The first one is where did the money go into? So which bank account are you paying this into? Drop down pick what bank account it's gone to. Where it says fees tax coded, you can leave yours completely blank. I've had to put a VAT code in there because I've got a VAT registered business. But if for you, if you don't have a VAT registered business, you can leave that completely blank and it will work accordingly. For me though, I'm going to put 20% VAT because I want to claim that VAT back. Default payment method. Well, you do have an option for eBay managed payments there if you've not got it. So I'm going to put eBay managed payments as my default payment method. You can again leave both of these blank if you want to. They'll have no impact whatsoever. The important ones though, eBay payments. Where do you want that income to go? Now I've created a brand new one called eBay sales, but you have every right to call it whatever you want to. Pick whatever income stream fits for you so that you can track your eBay income as they come in. After that, we just need to say, and then the other important thing is your eBay fees. Where do you want those fees to go? Now, again, I've created an expense account called eBay fees, and I've put it in there. How do we create brand new accounts? Well, we jump into QuickBooks, we go to accounting, from accounting, we press new. We're either gonna go and put an income account and call it something like eBay fees, or we're going to do an expense account, either as an expense or a cost of sale. And if we do cost of sales, we just want to call it eBay fees. Press save. What that will do is that will create you brand new accounts in here. Like I've got eBay sales, eBay fees. Now I'm happy with that. I press the save button and that's the only workflow I want to be activated. I want to leave the orders 
leave the products and leave the stock levels completely alone. Make sure you turn auto sync on because you want to auto sync that going forward. And what you want to do then, I would always do is just do a sync straight away. Now that it's doing that first synchronization, it's going to go back and it will tell you how far it can go back. Now we can't go all the way back to the start of time, but it can go back for a set number of time. The important thing though is make sure that auto sync is correct so that it then goes forward, it knows exactly what to do with them. And every time you have a payout from eBay, once that is going to see that payout and it's going to put that into QuickBooks for you. Let's see what it's done. So what you've seen here is now that that synchronization is finished, it's created two new deposits in QuickBooks Online. I can look at my connections just to make sure that everything's connected perfectly. And I can go to my data and see what information's come through. I will only see on ones we've done with just payouts on the bank payment options, I will see these transactions. Notice £8.98. 1774, £5.51. Back to eBay. Back to payouts. £8.98, 1774, £5.51. Back to my bank account. Back to banking. £8.98, 1774, £5.51. So these transactions on my one SAS have been sent over to QuickBooks. Let's have a look how QuickBooks have dealt with them. Under QuickBooks, the easiest thing to use is this search button, and that's going to tell you the last transactions that were created. You'll notice it's created the 1774 8.97 just here. And if I click into either of them, so let's look at the 1794. That's the latest one that's come through, 30 for the third. Now if I go to my eBay seller, let's go, it's a different one this time. So look, look at this one, how it's been built up. But on here, you'll notice there's two items sold. And those two items account for an £8 transaction, £13.19, with a £2.24, and a £1.21. When I jump into my bank deposit, I scroll right to the bottom, you'll see I've got my £8 income coming in, my £13.19 income going out, and my £1.21 fee there, and my £2.24 there. I've also been brought in my reference fees just here. Those reference fees will recognize to what's actually here. So there's my 10, 245, uh, 24517, and there's my 88373, back to here, 88373, 24517. So I now know that they've been accounted for perfectly. And all I need to do now is go to my bank account, and I'll see that there, it's found that deposit we've just looked at, and I press match. Now it's important to note when you press match on QuickBooks, you are not double counting the transactions. What you're doing is saying that that transaction is already in QuickBooks. The transactions now appeared on my bank account and I'm gonna match the two together. Because if you see what happened here, if I was to open this in a new tab, what it's done is it's found that transaction we've just looked at. And it's this transaction down the bottom here the eight pound, the 13, and all the transactions that go with it. If I look and see what happens when I press match, it disappears off this list, saying that it's been dealt with in QuickBooks. And then all I need to do is go to categorized, and for peace of mind, I can click into that 1774, see what it's been matched to. Well, actually you can see it's been matched to that exact same transaction. And if I look at the top here, the only difference, as you see here, we have one little stamp up here, which says basically it's been found within QuickBooks Online. If I go before and after, before and after, the only difference is that little stamp at the top. So all you're doing when you press match is you're saying that it's appeared in my bank account and here's a little stamp to prove it. And if I ever need to, I click on that little stamp and I can see what the transaction was that happened in my bank account. Now that's when it works perfectly. Now the only time I've ever found a problem with this is sometimes you have some rounding issues. Let's have a look at what those rounding issues are. So here we've got £8.98 going in the bank. And that transaction we already saw was £8.98 that we expected. Looking at that payout ID though, we had a £10.75 and a £1.77. If I jump into chart of accounts, look at what was created 
I've only got an £8.97 that's been created. That's because I've got a £10.75 here and a £1.78. If I jump into my eBay, £10.75, £1.77. Now, the reason it's brought in a £1.78 and not because £1.77 is purely just rounding. So I have two options. I can amend this transaction here, which is a bit time consuming, or I can force QuickBooks to find that transaction. And if I force it to find that transaction, all I need to do is click into the transaction and press find match. From find match, I can go through all the transactions that it could possibly be. And you'll see at the very bottom there, I have £8.97. So from £8.97, I'm going to click on the little button and it still won't let me go because it's saying I've got £8.97 but £8.98. That's fine now, I can press resolve difference and under resolve difference, all I'm going to do is put it to my eBay fees because I know that's where this problem is. What that's done is give me an £8.98 total, which I was expecting to see. So what I need to do is press save and now that transaction has been dealt with. And it's as simple as that. So most of the time, you're going to make that connection between one SaaS and eBay. And most of the time, all the transactions are going to go through and come through as your payout on QuickBooks. That's going to work perfectly, apart from the odd time when there's a difference. And you'll know there's a difference because it won't come up as a match. When it doesn't come up as a match, press Find Match from Find Match find the transaction you're looking for and put the small one pound difference to eBay fees. That's going to be the best way of dealing with those transactions. And there we have it. There is a way in which you can make sure that eBay managed payments to QuickBooks is as straightforward as it can be. Using that opportunity to be able to use one SaaS in between for completely free of charge means that every time you receive a payout in from eBay, you're going to be able to record that on QuickBooks dead straightforward. Again, this is only the first part of the series. The next one we're going to look at is what if you need more complicated? What if you need all the different orders to come through individually because you need to think about it from a VAT point of view? Well, that's where we're going to look at the next section. My name's been Aaron Patrick. Comment below if you have any questions regarding what's just happened. Also let us know is if eBay managed payments using just the payout section is right for you. I've got a feeling that for the majority of the businesses out there, especially the ones we act for, then the payout solution is going to be the best way of doing it. But let me know below. Is there any situations that I'm not thinking about where actually you need to have that more complicated way of doing it? Don't worry, that complicated way of doing it, we're going to go through step by step, just like we did today. And we're going to make sure that you're able to deal with that on your QuickBooks. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been a pleasure to do this video for you. If this has been useful at all, please, please, please use that like button, subscribe to the channel, do all the things that's going to make the algorithm work in favour for our channel, and then, then I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat, Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.